Hey, good morning everybody. I'm Kevin with Rhino Off-Road. Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm gonna test five different methods of charging your Pearl battery pack and figure out which one's the best. Also guys, as the title says, I am giving away a free 100 watt flexible solar panel. So stay tuned to the end of this video to figure out how you can win this yourself. Let's get started. Let's get started by defining what I mean is the best. In my mind, the best charging method is the one that gives you the highest charge rate, that is the highest watts per hour, uh, driven completely by something inherent to your vehicle. In other words, the 12 volt battery or something like solar from the sun. Because no good video starts without a disclaimer, I'm not an electrician and this is not electrical advice. So please seek help from a qualified professional before you implement any of this in your own vehicle. All right, so getting started. The first option here is gonna be your cigarette lighter. Uh, it is for the low, low price of Free Fitty. It comes with the Bluetti, and I'm sure a lot of the other portable battery brands include it as well. It's arguably the simplest, so we'll plug this into both the cigarette lighter in the car, as well as directly to the battery via an adapter just to try both out. Next, for the same price, is the included AC adapter. So this uses the barrel connector, as well as just your standard 120 volt AC uh, outlet. So I'm gonna plug this into the built-in outlet in the Jeep console, which I know a lot of newer vehicles have. And then afterwards, we'll plug it into this Duracell 400 watt inverter. Now, this thing does come with your standard outlet plug-in, but at 400 watts, I don't think my outlet inside the Jeep could handle it. So I'll plug this directly into the battery via the circuit breaker, and then plug the AC inverter into it. Next is the one I'm most excited about and one that you've probably never heard of. It is a 12 to 24 volt step up converter. Now what's really cool about this is it basically takes 12 volts from your battery and then it up converts it to 24 volts. Now uh, what we're gonna see is what that does to the charge current. So essentially I'll plug this into the battery by way of again the circuit breaker and we'll plug the other end into the Blue Eddy and see what we get. This uh, retails for about $25 or $30 on Amazon so also pretty inexpensive as well. And then lastly, I'm gonna use what a lot of people have, which is a solar panel. This one is by Top Solar. It's 100 watts, which is actually a pretty sunny day, so I should get close to that, but uh, we know that 100 watts is gonna be the cap, so we'll see all these compare. The test bed for this project is gonna be my Blue Eddy EB55. This is a 700 watt hour battery. Realize the point of this video is not to recommend one portable battery or another, it's simply just how you can best charge them. So this is gonna be my test bed, but uh, whether you're using a Jackery, Goal Zero, the same thing still applies. And so that cigarette lighter's giving us a measly 20 watts. Okay, so it looks like for the first test, we got about 20 watts with the cigarette lighter on the inside of the Jeep, and then about, I think, 46 watts if we plugged the cigarette lighter directly into the battery. Let's move on to the next test. Well, that didn't work at all. So the AC adapter here can charge at over 200 watts and the outlet in the Jeep is only rated for 150. So it tripped before it even started charging. So uh, we'll call test number two a bust. That is, however, a great segue into test number three. We're gonna use a 400 watt Duracell inverter. I bought this at Advanced Auto Parts for about 60 bucks with an AC inverter. And now we'll see what kind of charge combination we get. Ooh, 
Ooh, interesting. Things are heating up. So even with the 400 watt inverter, uh, the Blue Eddy AC adapter just kept tripping it off. So take another look at this thing. It is 25 volts at eight amps. So that's basically like eight times two and a half, which is. One, 200 watts. So this thing's drawing about 200 watts and the Duracell inverter is supposed to be rated up to 300 watts continuous, 400 watts peak, but it is not staying on and it just keeps kicking it off. Uh, just real quick, just to make sure there's nothing wrong with my Blue Eddy inverter, I'm gonna plug it into the wall directly and we'll just see what we get out of a wall outlet. For test number four now, we're gonna break out the step-up converter. This thing is pretty simple. Essentially what it does is two of these wires hook directly to your 12 volt car battery, and by directly, I mean via a fuse or circuit breaker, of course. Uh, it takes 12 volts, electricity goes into the box, some magic happens, and 24 volts comes out. What a lot of you may not know about your battery is they're not just fixed to 12 volts of charging. Uh, you can charge on mine all the way up to 24 volts. I think the Goal Zero maybe go up to 28 volts, the Jackery about 23, 24, somewhere in there. What this allows you to do is basically take the same amount of current, uh, double the voltage, which thereby with Watt's Law, voltage times current equals power, double your power. If you double your power, you're now doubling the charge rate of your battery. So for this test, the first thing I'm actually gonna do is hook up the Blue Eddy straight to my car battery just so we can see what 12 volts gives us. I have this uh, pretty nifty DC current meter here as well. So we'll check the current at 12 volts and then recheck it at 24 volts with a step-up converter. So let's check it out. And just so you can kind of understand what the setup is here, I have two wires coming straight from my battery, a positive and a negative. This is both uh, 12 gauge wire. I have a Blue C 25 amp circuit breaker for the hot side. My Blue Eddy uses the XT60 connector uh, for the DC side of the house. And then I crimped on two test leads of uh, alligator clips just so that we could quickly test this out. Okay, so not bad. At 12 volts with the portable battery hooked directly to the car battery, we pulled about 63 watts. My uh, meter here showed 5.4 amps, so 63 watts divided by 5.4 amps is somewhere around 11 and 3 quarters-ish volts, which makes sense. Maybe my battery, my car is just a little low. There could also be just a little bit of resistance with the alligator clips, etc. but by and large, 63 watts, you actually see between using like the cigarette lighter and having this hooked directly to the battery, there is a pretty substantial difference when you get rid of all the resistance, all that little 18 gauge uh, wiring they use and everything really uh, restricts a lot of the current uh, flow. So now that we have a baseline 63 watts with 12 volts direct, the only thing we're gonna change now is add in the step converter into the solution and we'll try the same test again. Okay, so now we're getting over 190 watts, which is pretty much the exact same wattage that we got when I plugged this straight into a regular 120 volt AC outlet. When we measure the 12 volt side of this uh, with my DC amp meter, we saw we got about 18.8 .8 to 19 amps. And then on the 24 volt side, it dropped that to about 8.4. So 190 divided by 8.4 is like 22 volts or something in there. It's really not costing me anything. Besides a little bit of heat that this generates, uh, at 190 watts, I can charge a 700 watt hour battery like this in like just under four hours. And even when I'm running something like my fridge, which draws about 40 to 50 watts, I can still charge this at a rate of like 120 watts, which is pretty awesome. So just a quick test with the converter. I ran it for about 20 minutes, checked the temperature before and after with my infrared thermometer, and it capped out at about 110 degrees.
does have over frequency, under volt, over volt, overheat uh, protections in it. And then again, you would never hook this straight to a battery, but use some kind of fuse or circuit breaker on the, the input side. Uh, some people might say, well, this is inefficient. You're, you're gonna get some loss converting from 12 to 24 volts. And you're totally right, but I would also argue that you don't really care. The alternator is gonna charge the battery anytime the vehicle is running, no matter what. So any bit of loss you have, uh, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna keep generating more and more electricity. Also, you could argue, well, you know, you could just go with a red arc or something like that. And that's 100% true, but by the same argument, you're converting DC to AC and then eventually back to DC. Uh, so really, you have lost there as well. And those systems are arguably far more expensive and probably more robust than you need just to have a portable battery or something like that in the back of your vehicle. But uh, to ensure that we've tested and exhausted all the options here, now let's look at the 100 watt flexible solar panel I have from Top Solar. So with our top solar solar panel now we're seeing about 65 watts. It's rated for 100, so obviously you know it's it's less expensive. It's a cheaper Chinese product. I use it just for a um, a test of something else I had going on. So I had it in the garage. This was about 120 or 140 bucks. It's certainly not the nicest 100 watt panel you can get, but once again to get a 200 watt panel that is actually putting out close to 200 watts, you'd have to have perfect sunlight, uh, middle of the summer, as well as uh, you know, you're gonna fork out a lot more money. So um, this is definitely a consideration. I, solar is really cool. I think it's awesome that you can generate electricity yourself without needing anything else. But if you're like me, you do a lot of winter wheeling, solar is just not gonna work. Uh, it is not bright enough for long enough, uh, even if you had direct sunlight, to really keep your battery topped off when you're running your fridge, your devices, etc. Let's recap. Uh, we started with the cigarette lighter here. Again, totally free, usually comes with the portable batteries. In the Jeep itself, this gave me about 20 watts, and then when I plugged it directly into the battery, 30 to 40, which, you know, is something, but that will not keep up with even my fridge. My fridge draws about 40 to 45 watts uh, at peak. Next, we tried the AC inverter that, again, usually comes with these batteries. This charge is excellent, to be honest. If you're plugging it into the wall, say maybe between trips, you're able to charge your battery fully up, and you're only gonna go out maybe overnight where, uh, you know, you shouldn't really need to be able to, or shouldn't have to charge your battery again, but um, not super practical for just using this inside your vehicle. Moving on to the Duracell uh, 400 watt inverter here. Again, this is from like Advanced Auto Parts for 60 bucks, and it could not handle this charger. So I would call this, as well as something like this, not really an option. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that you can beef this up. You could get a 1000 watt inverter, you could go with Red Arc for some nicer companies and nicer brands, but the price is going up. And when I only spent, you know, four or 500 bucks on this battery, does it really make sense? And it has a built-in inverter. Does it really make sense to have to go and spend another couple hundred bucks plus in order just to be able to charge the thing? For me, it doesn't. Next, this 12 to 24 volt step-up converter. So again, I got this on Amazon. These retail for about $30. This is a 20 amp version, which I picked the 20 amp just because I roughly assumed that worst case scenario, I draw about, you know, 16 amps on the input side. So at 20, uh, it should kick itself offline uh, with its, you know, over current and over volt protection if necessary. So I think this is a great option. Uh, and I am definitely going to figure out how I'm gonna implement this in my Jeep. This thing is very simple. You just have to wire the battery into a circuit breaker into this, or make sure that you fuse the connection well, uh, and then figure out some way to switch this on and off. Lastly, again, worth honorable mention because a lot of people use solar. Uh, this top uh, solar solar panel, 100 watts, works just fine middle of the summer if you want to top off your battery when you're at camp, that kind of thing. But to state the obvious, it has to be pure sunlight. Unless you spend a decent amount of money on a solar panel, you're never going to get the full rated wattage. And if I wanted one that was rated at 200 watts to keep up with something like this, yeah, I'm going to be at 250, 300 bucks, probably easy. All right, guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. My goal is to try to tailor it towards someone who's just getting their vehicle set up with a portable power system, whether you're brand new to camping and overlanding um, or, or you're just kind of thinking about how you can get some extra power along with your trip. The important thing to keep in mind, no matter which route you go, is that you know, as you start adding things like a portable fridge where it's gonna burn 40 to 50 watts plus per hour, plus your camera and your drone and all these other things, you're gonna need a way to keep your battery topped off. 
Solar in the middle of the summer is a great option and is probably what most people use. Just realize, you know, if you have any aspirations to go out during the winter or when it's raining or snowing, which is, you know, personally my favorite times, uh, solar is obviously not going to work. So the step-up converter, I'm really excited for my setup. I think it's going to work great. The price point's great at 30 bucks, and as long as you can uh, size the thing right according to your setup, uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be a great option for you to look at. All right, guys. I don't know if you can hear that, but my neighbor's playing Friends in Low Places, which is freaking awesome. Anyways, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you got something out of this. Or if you figured out early on that you can just skip straight from the beginning all the way to the end to figure out the details about the giveaway, love the ingenuity, work smarter, not harder, that works as well. So here are the details. Top Solar sent me two of their 100 watt flexible solar panels, and I'm gonna give one of them away to you guys. They're pretty cool, actually. Uh, I didn't talk a lot about it in the video, but uh, it's 180 degrees, almost that it can bend, so it'd be a great option if you wanted to mount this on like your rooftop tent or the hood of your vehicle or something like that. Now this isn't a paid sponsorship. As you saw in the video, I'm not even necessarily advocating that solar should be your primary option for charging your, your power station, your portable battery, but nonetheless, I'm gonna give one away to you guys. So selfishly, I am 15 subscribers away from 2,000 on YouTube, which is a huge milestone for me. I owe uh, so much to you guys for your support over the last couple of years and I really appreciate it So I want to give back to you. There's basically three things that I need from you though in order to be eligible uh, So first off if you haven't already subscribe to my YouTube channel right now right, right as you're watching this video You can just scroll down real quick hit the little subscribe button hit notification uh, Bell if you'd like to get notification of my future uploads and then you can scroll right back up to the video here to figure out What step number two is? Step number two is I need you to follow me on Instagram. So go to Instagram and type in at Rhino Offroad with an underscore. I'll also just leave a, a direct link to it in the description below. Uh, so please follow me there as well. I post a lot of reels and stories and things in between each of my YouTube uploads. So it's a good way to, uh, to stay in touch with me in between videos. And then lastly, number three, what I need you to do is just leave a comment after you've done steps one and two down below with your uh, Instagram handle so that I can ensure uh, basically you've hit all the wickets. What I'm gonna do is the weekend of, I think November 18th, I think that's a weekend, I'm going out with uh, Ed Shin, with Trail Newbie, with Flyfisher 530, and we're gonna do a multi-day trip in the Eastern Sierra in the snow. So when we're out there, I'll use a phone app or something, I'll put all of you guys on a list and uh, let one of them pick a random winner, and then as long as you are within the continental United States, I will send a brand new one of these off to you. Also, as an aside, if you need a little extra incentive, I made a bet with Trail Newbie like nine, 10 months ago that if I hit 2,000 subscribers by Halloween, which is eight days from now, he would have to dress up as me uh, for the holiday. So I would love to see that. In fact, I'd pay Monday to see that. Uh, so let's see if we can get over that hump. That would be awesome. And then as a smaller aside, he's at 995 subscribers. So if you guys don't mind going and hooking him up with just a couple clicks, uh, we'll get him over 1,000, which would be also uh, really cool to see. Anyways, I've asked way too much of you guys. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, any feedback for this video or any other videos, please feel free to leave it below. And then other than that, hopefully by the next time I talk to you guys, we're over 2,000. So thank you again, and I look forward to seeing who the winner's gonna be. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.